Hi friends, I am Praveen working in a software industry for the last 25 years at which more than 10 years I have been in management position. One of my key achievement has been I have been instrumental in implementing CMMI in my company. The knowledge I gained I will share with you, show you and help you understand the basics of CMMI in these series of videos. So let's begin. The CMMI Capability Maturity Model Integrated Now if you if your company if you are managing your company what are the priorities or goals of what would be your priorities or goals for the operation of the company. You would want the operating efficiency to improve. You want every work, the predictability of the work, basically the software development. You want the repeatability, consistency, so that every project that you do, you are able to do it in right time with the right, if you tell, think, ten, decide that it is a 10 days efforts, then it should, it should be in 10 days. So you want it to be uh, repeatable, you want the cost uh, and efforts in control. So to achieve these, what are the obstacles that you have? Some of the obstacles is you have a personal turnover. So people come and leave, come and when they leave, so it actually hampers the work. This lack of visibility of the work, basically lack of visibility of the amount of work that is there. The complexity of the work, basically how complex it is, it's very difficult some of many of times to or some of the times to actually understand the complexity of the work. We may not have the sufficient knowledge, skill, people to do the particular work and lack of defined process which is one of the, one of the um, important one is if the process is not defined. So you want to overcome those obstacles which we have identified which we have just told you. So some of the method in which you can actually overcome these obstacles are hire better developers, offer more incentives, you give more and more training to the people so that their skill sets improves and use project management softwares to manage your project. But is this sufficient? The most important thing is if you are following a process model, something like a CMMI, which are claiming or which actually gives these particular benefits, it will ensure that if you are properly following CMMI, if you are following CMMI, then you, your project process uh, completion is actually more predictable. You can, you can repeatedly be able to estimate your work product properly and based on the past because you are maintaining the past history of all the work that you have done, you are carrying over the knowledge from the past project, so it's going to be more repeatable. You have improved productivity. Some organization report 30% reduction in cost because of the productivity because people actually are gaining when they are following the process. So it's more easy actually to complete the work once like they know what's the process to be done. And finally, you, would, you can ensure that you have a better product coming out. So the CMMI, actually the SCI, defines the process as follows. The quality of a system or product is highly influenced by the quality of the process used to develop and maintain it. So this is premise by the SCI for the process and quality. So the quality of the system or product is highly influenced by the quality of the process used to develop and maintain it. 
So that is how these all process models have come because they know that if you are following the process properly, then you would have a better product coming out. CMMI is basically a maturity level model. So you have, if you are not following anything, you are naturally at level zero. And if you are having something defined, you know, you are following something and not following something, then it's, it's something like you are at level one. If you are following the project management practices as defined by the CMMI, then you are at level two. If you are following all those engineering practices as defined by the CMMI, then you are at level three. If you are quantitatively managing the process, the product, you are ensuring that the engineering processes are actually quantitatively managed and then you are at level four. If you are ensuring that your processes are doing what it is supposed to do without variations you are and if there is variation in the process then you are optimizing that and that is then you are at level five so the cmmi model basically are divided into different process areas like project management process area, the configuration management process area, the supplier agreement management process area, etc. And so you have it's defined into different process areas. And each process area is basically having a specific goal and the generic goals. The specific goals are again having something called specific practices. So the every goal is having some practices which you will have to follow then the goal actually then you have as good as followed the goal so the generic goals are having generic practices now the diff, the specific goal is actually every process area is having its own own specific goals and they are called as specific goals basically now, the project management process area <coughs> is having the sp specific goals of project management. Whereas configuration management will have its specific goal of configuration management. But all of them have some common set of goals and they are called as generic goals. Now, the generic goals are common to all the process areas. So all generic goals are again having generic practices which you will have to follow and ensure that these are being followed. Now, the whole processes basically can be categorized into four different categories. The process management wherein you ensure the process management category where you ensure that all the process whether the CMMI process is being followed properly. The defining the process and then ensuring that the process is being followed. The project management process ensures that you are following all the project management practices properly throughout the project so that your project is getting completed in time. The engineering processes ensure that you are following all the engineering processes so you get you make the product what the customer wants you build it and you are able to deliver the product what actually the customer has asked for the support processes are to ensure that your project management process your engineering processes are actually following them properly so you have a process like configuration management you have support processes So what process area do you think a software company should have for a project management? Think of it. What is that you would require? When you, what are the processes that you will require for a project management? 
So okay, these are the processes, the project planning. So you will have to do the project planning properly. Then you will have to monitor the project. You have done the planning, you have to monitor the project. You have to ensure that the work items that you have given outside to someone or you are buying something, they are coming in time, the work product that you have given for someone to be done, they do it and give you exactly what you want and they give you in time. The integrated project management ensures that you are actually following all your project management principles properly. The risk management process ensures that you are you are looking at all the risks that are involved, you are identifying and you are monitoring the risks basically. So you are having the mitigating, mitigation and the contingency plan for the risk basically. The quantitatively project manage is going to be ensuring that you are able to manage the project quantitatively. Now, could you think what could be the engineering process that you want in a software company? So here are the engineering processes for a software company. As for a, a, any project, first you would have to know that you are managing your requirement problem. First, you are developing the requirement. So whether you, you would seeing that all the requirement has been gathered properly and you have understood what the customer requires. And you are, and the customer are in sync with what is expected. Then you make a design diagrams for the same which are actually technical solutions. Then the work product that you have developed basically you integrate them, that is product integration. You want to ensure when the work products are getting developed in technical solutions to ensure that they are actually doing what they are supposed to be doing, that is product ver verification. And finally, you are checking that you are actually build the product what the customer wants and that's validation. So these are the engineering processes. Now what could you tell what could be the support processes that you would have or what support processes a software company requires. So here are some of the support processes of CMMI. The CMMI support processes are configuration management wherein you identify the configuration item and you ensure that the product you always have the latest one and you are managing the pro configuration items properly so, so that you are actually building the right product and you are ensuring that the project product which need not be changed will not get changed without the knowledge or without going through the right change management process. The Process and product quality assurance practices ensures that the process is being followed properly. The measurement and analysis process ensures that you are measuring of the parameters of the project, the engineering processes, etc. so that they are meeting the criteria what they are supposed to be meeting. The decision analysis and resolution process and the causal analysis and resolution process. The DAR process is basically whenever you are doing a design diagram or whenever you are making some major decisions, you will ensure that you are evaluated the decision on different parameters and then you have made the decisions. So what are the processes do you think a software company should have for a process management? So here we have the process management processes like organizational process definition. So you define the process, your organization process focus, organization process performance, you are ensuring that process performance is being followed, then organizational process training. I think one thing, something is missing. Okay. How do you evaluate a process area? Now how do you evaluate? A process area whether it is being followed. So here, every process is having a specific goal 
and it's having specific practices. So for example, we'll let us take a project planning process. So one of the one of the specific goal of the project planning is establish estimates. So it means that you have to estimate your project planning. And the first specific practice of the specific goal is estimate the scope of the project. So the first one you do is you estimate the project, estimate the project, how big is the project. So you have maybe a function point or some methodology used to estimate the scope of the project basically. The second practice is estimate the work product and task attribute. So you break down everything. You do a work breakdown structure and understand what all work, what all works you have to or what all work has to be done to complete this particular work. So again, you are estimating the work. The third one is you are defining the project life cycle. So you know what what is to be done next and how are you going to evaluate the particular project. Then you prepare the budget, basically estimate efforts and costs, so you prepare the budget. So these are the specific practices that you would have to follow to ensure that you have met the specific goal. So this is, that's all for today friends. And we will ensure that we will go in the next video, we will ensure we will have, we'll go through the level two processes. Thank you for now. Bye.